All right. I would like to talk about how you can use Bodyplot uh, to assess closed loop system performance in, in terms of comment following. Um, let's look at this closed loop system. You have a transfer function. This transfer function can be the multiplication of a controller transfer function multiplied by a plant transfer function. I am going to denote it as T of S. So for this unity feedback configuration, you can write the closed loop system like this, T of S divided by one plus T of S. Um, note that here you can have any other interesting block diagram configuration. All you need to know, all, all you need to find is the clo closed loop system transfer function. So then you can represent this system as this, basically comment enters to your closed loop system and your output uh, basically goes out. Now, um, say comment is not constant, right? We can track constant signals. Either we can put a feed forward gain or, or a PI type compensator. But let's say we are interested to track a time varying signal. And this time varying signal has a frequency, uh, omega radians per second. You know, um, basically, this comment can be a combination of sine and cosines, or uh, a time varying function that can be approximated by sines and cosines. All we need to know is the average or on a ballpark some frequency depending on the signal. So for the sake of the following discussion, I am going to assume sine of omega t. So this signal has a frequency omega uh, radians per second. So the question is how well can the output follow this time varying comment? Okay, so in this case, right, this comment has some magnitude basically for sine it changes between one and minus one it is it has some angle depending on omega now likewise this closed loop system transfer function if you think s j omega it depends on omega and it also has a magnitude and the output basically of this system is the inputs magnitude multiplied by this transfer function's magnitude plus the angle of both the input and the transfer function. Now, you know, I assume you know, the magnitude and the frequency of the input signal that you are applying, in this case, sine omega t. So using the plot, you can basically plot the frequency response of this transfer function and then looking at that body plot, you can assess whether you can track a particular time varying command or not. I will directly dive into an example. I assume you know how to sketch body plot uh, in MATLAB or by hand. If you want me to make a video on how to sketch body plot, uh, let me know. I will be happy to do so. All right, so basically, this is a, in the forward loop. Here is the controller transfer function multiplied by the plant transfer function. I am going to assume we have a PD type of a structure, 10S plus 25, proportional derivative controller. And here is the plant. Basically, um, this controller can stabilize this system. And if we look at the frequency response, basically magnitude in decibels, and phase in degrees, basically, this is what we have. So this transfer functions, uh, magnitude and phase changes as a function of frequency. For example, um, to perfectly track um, or nicely track um, this sine omega t, we, when we look at here, we can see that we, we here have zero decibels around of uh, one radians per second on this yellow region. Meaning that basically the magnitude of this transfer function is one, zero decibel means one. So you can do the conversion like 20 log 10 of X is zero decibels. So here X will come out to be one. So meaning that this transfer function's magnitude at this particular one radians per second frequency 
is unity, meaning that zero decibels or unity, you are not going to lose anything in magnitude at the output. If you apply, on the other hand, a 0.1 radians per second, basically sine of omega 1 t in this case, you are going to lose a little bit. It is not zero decibel. You are going to lose a little bit in magnitude. Now, if we look at the phase, there won't be phase shift at uh, basically 0.1 radians per second. Um, there will be a little bit phase shift. It is not not notice. It won't be that much noticeable, or we can ignore that. So. Um, we can assess that when we apply 0.1, we are going to lose a little bit in magnitude and we are not going to have any phase shift. When we apply uh, 1 radians per second sine, basically sine of t, we are not going to lose anything in magnitude. We are going to have a little bit phase shift. If you apply anything more than that, for example, let's say 10 sine of 10 radians per second, we are going to lose uh, a good amount of amplitude and we are going to, going to have a phase shift of close to minus 60 degrees. All right, first of all, um, here are some plots to uh, make our understanding better. When we apply a command of one with this controller, we could not able to track much with PD. There is some steady state error. Uh, we can directly calculate this by the state state error analysis. There are videos about that. Um, there are also on my channel videos about different compensator types. You can also um, take a look at those like controller design or PID type of videos. Now, when we apply sine of T, right, we are here basically, we are not basically losing anything. By the way, yellow is the commands that we apply, the C of T, and blue lines are the output responses in all figures. So this is the output, this is the C of T. Uh, as expected, we can almost perfectly, we nicely follow this sinusoidal signal. When we apply 0.1 T, right, I mentioned we are going to lose a little bit. We are looking for zero decibels to perfectly track in magnitude and we are looking for no phase shift. And when we are applying a sign um, 0.1 T, we are losing a little bit in magnitude as expected from, from the body magnitude plot. There is no phase shift. Now, when we apply sine of 10, right, uh, this is C of T again, this is the blue, is the Y of T. Um, we are losing L pretty much um, or close to half of the signal, which is also expected from this body plot. If we look at here, basically here, we are looking at minus six decibels. So minus six decibels, if you convert to basically, um, if you convert to our regular language, log 10 of x minus 6, if you find x, you are going to lose, it will be 1 over, one over 2, so you are going to lose half of the signal. Um, and you can directly see phase shift, uh, expected phase shift. So for this example, first example, we can say that um, we can perfectly track um, sine of t, which is expected from the body plot. Now, in the following examples, I am not going to plot uh, system or close-up system responses as a function of time, uh, because I hope this example tells you, you know, on the once you look for the region on the body plot uh, that has zero decibels and no phase shift, you can perfectly track sinusoidal signals. All right, so let's look at this example now. G of S is one, GP of S plant is one divided by S plus one. If you look at the body magnitude plot, um, we never hit zero decibels. So um, this is around minus six. So if you basically apply a sine of T, sine of omega T, with omega belonging to somewhere this region, 
between 0.1 to 1, you are going to lose half of the signal. And as you approach the here, you are going to have more and more phase shift. So, so it is useful, right? I mean, it is useful to um, plot the closed loop systems transfer functions, but the plot to assess, you know, um, how well you contract time varying commands. Now, in this case, you cannot. We have a huge loss here. We don't have zero decibels. Now let's change this controller to a PI type of a controller. With this PI controller, you know, we could be able to track constant commands. And um, we can also track a set of time varying commands, right? Let's write C of T equals the sine of omega T. So let's look at the um, magnitude plot. Up to here, basically, I can go a little bit further, up to here, basically for uh, omegas belonging to this range, I am not going to lose much in the body plots, you know, like transfer functions magnitude. So that since this magnitude will be multiplied by inputs magnitude at the output, I am not going to lose anything. Uh, we can basically output magnitude wise, we can uh, have a good match with the input. Now, if we look at um, the phase, well, I am going to have, I am going, we are going to have kind of a noticeable phase shift after maybe 0.08, this point. Uh, if it is fine, you know, you can go up to here. Basically, look, taking the intersection between these two regions, we can say that if omega of the input belongs to um, this, I can say 0.01 to 0.08 radians per second, I could be able to track sinusoidal signals well. And this is, you know, we know um, PI compensator allows us, uh, if it allows basically uh, command following performance of constant commands, and it also allows tracking of time varying commands uh, up to a point. Now, next, basically, I am adding a gain 50. Basically, I am trying to increase so-called the bandwidth of my closed loop system. If you look at the resulting body plot of the closed loop system, GCL, I can perfectly track time varying comments in magnitude almost up to 20. And looking at the phase shift, I can say uh, up to here, I am not going to have a noticeable phase shift. So C of T was sine of omega T. So looking at the intersection of these two regions, I can say if omega basically less than or equal to, this is kind of eight radians per second, I could be able to track uh, time varying commands perfectly in addition to constant comments. Um, I hope you find this video um, useful. Let me know if you have any comments. I will, play, uh, I will be happy to answer uh, any questions or comments you may have. Thanks.